students will or prospective students will start to join and we're recording and we'll be all set. All right, so we have people trickling in. All right, so I think the attendee list is kind of slowed down. So I'm gonna go ahead and get us started. So welcome everyone um, this evening or this afternoon, depending on where you're located. So I am Dr. Leah Jeanette. I am from Case Western Reserve School of Medicine. I'm in the Department of Bioethics. We're so glad that you joined us today. And I am joined by three of our alums from our Masters in Bioethics and Medical Humanities program. I'm so excited that they joined us here today to talk about their experience in our master's program and to talk a little bit about kind of from the beginning of their decision to enroll all the way to where they are now. So we are excited for our attendees to hear from them. Um, just a little housekeeping. I want to let our attendees know. Um, so if you, during this um, conversation, if you have questions, um, the best place to submit your questions is under the Q&A. Um, at the end, if we have time, um, you, we will try to take some questions. I don't know, depending on how our conversation goes, if we'll have time for Q&A, but there's a Q&A feature um, here on Zoom. Um, if we don't, you can also submit questions to our email, which is bioethics at case.edu. And um, we're happy to connect with you that way as well. So I'll go ahead and get us started. And um, Jeshurun, if you wanna get us started and introduce yourself, we'll start with you. Yes, hi everyone. My name is Jeshurun Adarkoyadam. I am a recent graduate class of 2022. Um, I'm currently onboarding for a clinical research specialist position at university hospitals. And I'm excited to be here tonight. Great. Peyton, would you like to go next? Yes, I am a graduate of the class of 2020. Um, I'm currently a rising 2L at Case Western Reserve School of Law, um, focusing in health law, so. Fantastic, and Michael. Hi everyone, I'm Michael Wynn. Um, I went to Case for undergrad and then worked for a year and then came back for the master's program graduating in 2020. Um, excited to, to talk with everyone. Fantastic. Oh, and I am uh, on my way to medical school uh, this August at Dartmouth. Fantastic. Well, thank you all for joining us. I am so excited to hear about your journeys um, joining our program and through our program. Um, I know I've kept in touch with you, um, all three of you in different um, capacities. And Jeshurun, as you mentioned, you're a very recent alum. Um, so it's been exciting to have you as a student this past year and see kind of your growth, um, the most recent. Um, so the first thing I want us to kind of talk about is your decision to enroll in our program, right? What led you to bioethics and medical humanities and ultimately to Case Western and our program? Um, so I'm not sure who wants to take that question first, but anyone can kind of chime in. I could go ahead and get started. So I have an interest in going to medical school and I have always kind of held um, that interest, but after graduating in 2020 from undergrad, my undergraduate um, university, I just knew that I had more interests. I didn't know how to go about kind of separating these out and determining which route I wanted to go. Um, I had a friend that had done a bioethics program at Columbia. And so I'd heard good things from her about just the specialty of bioethics. So I was like intrigued by that. And then I had a mentor who recommended Case's program. So all of those different things kind of <laughs> 
compounding influences led me to this program and I've never looked back. <laughs> yeah, Jeshwin, that is actually uh, similar to my journey towards starting the program as well. Um, I went to Keys for undergrad and I took some bioethics courses uh, which were in the department um, and open to undergrads at the time. Um, and after I graduated, I was also sort of in this like limbo of, I'm not really sure if I want to apply to med school yet. Um, I knew that I had that interest, but it, for me, it was always like, a, I know how serious of a commitment this is, like in terms of time and money and like your entire life really. So I wasn't really sure if I wanted to commit yet. Um, I worked for a year and then the pandemic hit and it really started to sort of like kick things into gear of, okay, I should probably plan out my like next steps pretty, pretty carefully now. Um, and I remember the bioethics courses that I take at, at Case in undergrad that I really enjoyed. Those were some of my, some of my favorite classes in undergrad actually. Um, and so for me, it was sort of like a, an opportunity to like take those interests that I had and sort of like mesh them with this program, which is sort of a very nice bridge of sorts if you want to go into medicine, which is one of the many options that's available to you from this program, uh, I'd say. Um, but yeah, for me, it was like a program that was a good opportunity to discern. Um, and that's something that like, I remember when I was sitting in this seminar, like how, like what, two years ago, I think, um, that was one of the things that Dr. Anderson was talking about was how this is a great program if you want to discern like what your next step is in terms of your next career step um, whether it's grad school or working or whatever that is, it's a great program for that. Yeah, my experience was also similar. I did um, my undergrad pre-med convinced for about the whole four years that I was going to go to med school. Um, but throughout that time had been doing work as a CNA in nursing homes and like working with people and seeing the sort of frontline medical patient care and was really unsure that that was something I wanted to do. Um, and once I got to MCAT time and just stress and I realized I, I don't really want to lock myself in this way. I don't want to commit to one thing. And this is not what I really like anyways. I always like my humanities classes a lot more than my science classes anyways. And I got an email after I took the MCAT from master's programs from Case's bioethics program and was just reading through and thought to myself, oh my gosh, these are all the things that I wanted to do in the first place. I didn't know this was a thing you could do and sort of read more about it and decided to go. And it was a really great sort of stepping off point and could really send you anywhere, exposed you to a lot of different um, people and experiences. Yeah, Michael, something you said, there's a word in there that I think is um, really um, important. It's discernment, right? And I think this program is something that uniquely offers that opportunity. So we have students that come in that know exactly what they want to do, and that's great. And this program can be designed for those students, but it also is designed for students who are looking for that opportunity of discernment, um, which is a fantastic way to spend nine months. Um, I will also, to Michael's credit, um, he was part of our class that was part of the remote class um, during the height of the pandemic. And so he, um, along with many um, students that year, spent a lot of time on Zoom. In fact, spent all of their time on Zoom. Um, just, like so, <laughs> just like this. Just like this. So he had a very unique experience um, as part of our, our program. Um, but our students in particular really rose to the occasion for that um, for that academic year. Well, I would also share that like despite our, our class being really great, one of the reasons why I chose the program at Case is because it's one of the oldest uh, bioethics program in the country. And bioethics is a very like relatively newer field. Um, and so like things are changing very rapidly. So it's it was very clear, like even though we were all online and obviously like moving forward, like Fingers crossed there's not like a new outbreak of a pandemic or something that forces everything online again. But, you know, the fact that my experience was so positive sort of speaks volumes, at least to me, on how established and well organized this program was. So even though, it, even though it was on Zoom, it was still really, really rewarding. And I think that was in a large part also because of like the faculty that we had um, and the sort of, you know, organization that existed 
uh, in this in this grad program. Yeah, I think I with the online I we started in person and then didn't come back from spring break and finished the online. And to be living through the COVID pandemic and to have your professors be the ones who are developing guidelines and working hands on like they they were literally the ones who were deciding um, like working on developing policies in the event we need to ration ventilators. How's that going to happen and finishing a public health ethics course online in a pandemic was really a wild ride. Yeah, Peyton, if I remember correctly, your class um, did the global pandemic exercise and then like we went away for spring break and we never came back, <laughs> which was a little too close to home, I think, for many of us. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty crazy. So, so now that we're talking about your time in the program, do you, you guys have a favorite memory or a favorite class? that you can think of during your time in the program? I have a lot of favorite memories, um, a lot of favorite times, but something from the last question, which kind of bleeds into my time in the program, um, as well as what led me to the program, it was the faculty, we were talking about that in terms of organization. But I think that that was something that the bond between faculty and the interest and enthusiasm faculty have for making these changes and being at the front lines was something that I enjoyed in the program. And I think it's something that inspired me. It was encouraging, I would say, to see people in these careers, in these fields, people making their own fields and enthusiastic about it. <laughs> so I think that was one of my absolute favorite things about this program, something that I noticed while I was watching webinars and meeting different people during the application process. Um, I would say a favorite class would be, I enjoyed medicine, society, and culture, as well as race and medicine, because both of them, besides, excuse me, the instructors, um, I really enjoyed the content, the readings we had, and both were discussion-based classes. So hearing what my peers had to say and being able to have time to formulate answers in what felt very much like a safe environment, I, I really enjoyed. So I think those would be my favorites. <laughs> yeah, I think kind of going off of that, um, I, I did my first um, clinical experience at the Cleveland Clinic and then took uh, neuroethics, which was with Lauren Sankery, who has a JD degree from Case Western, but she sort of paved her own way, made her own spot. Everything she does at the Cleveland Clinic is because she invented it out of her own mind. This is the thing I want to do and applied and is doing the thing that she thought up in her head. And I was absolutely blown away that that is something that is possible that you can do with what bioethics. Uh, I also have to uh, jump off of judgment again. Uh, Medicine, Society, and Culture was my favorite class as well, by far. Um, besides the professors, Dr. Shadowski and Dr. Anderson were fantastic uh, lecturers. And again, um, the class is extremely based in like the seminar setting. And I'm someone who does not do the best in sort of a, a very standardized lecture setting. And you're, you're watching slides and you're listening to people lecture. Um, uh, so this was fantastic because we were given um, readings um, and at times a lot of readings, but that's what, you know, grad school is for. And uh, those readings, despite being long, were all like really interesting. Like for the first time, I think in a long time in academia, I was like looking at you know, the abstracts for these readings and like, whoa, like this is really interesting stuff. And I'm, I'm like so excited to read this, which was wild to me because I was remembering how I first, you know, was assigned stuff in undergrad and I would be dreading doing these readings. Um, but besides the reading themselves, the sort of discussions we had in class and the writings that we were assigned to do uh, were really engaging. And for me, they were extremely practical uh, in what I was setting myself up for later on, being writing my essays for medical school um, applications, for example, and also for interviews as well. The sort of like way of like critically thinking about writing 
um, and the sort of way that Dr. Sadowski Anderson sort of pushed us to write in a in a critical way, but also in a like a, an academically questioning way, that really sort of changed how I wrote. It really made me a lot more confident in how I wrote, and I was then able to, you know, write things a lot more uh, confidently and honestly, just like more eloquently. Uh, and that sort of mindset is what I brought to me when I was again writing my essays and also while I was interviewing. Um, and so, in general, I felt those sort of writing skills were seen on all of my classes in the program, but definitely within meta society and culture. And I think, Michael, it's not even just like writing skills. I think it's their way of structuring the course and their writing assignments built up confidence in your own thoughts. It's it's like you can, I think Peyton was talking about um, a mentor who kind of pulls things out of her mind and makes it into her reality. And I think that's what I got from that course was that I can think something, have an opinion on it and stand by it and make it into reality and have other people buy into it. And that I think does wonders to all other aspects of academia. I also wanna add that like, one of the things that I really appreciated is there are a lot of faculty members in the program that do a really good job at pushing students in a very healthy way, right? So like, I actually joined a grad program after this, after I finished this grad program. And one of the things that I felt a lot during that program was I felt a little bit too comfortable and it was nice to look back at my time at this program and be like you know a lot of the times I felt uncomfortable not in a bad way but in a way where I was like how can I do better at this like they're they're sort of pushing me to think about like this aspect that I didn't consider or you know oh you made this critique about this paper well what about this idea and so these sort of ways of thinking really sort of pushed me to, again, like, you know, justify my arguments really well, but also like you were saying, Jeff Jeshrin, like being able to make a stand and, you know, have an opinion and be able to then confidently and eloquently uh, explain it uh, and write about it or, or talk about it. Um, and I think that really comes from that little bit of uncomfortability, which I think is actually really, uh, that's really special. And that's, that's not something that like really, should be taken for granted. So that was also something that I really enjoyed as well in the program. Yeah, I think that also the program did a great job of when you're sitting in the beginning and you hear you're gonna have to do this capstone at the end, and it's this whole big thing. And you're thinking, how am I ever gonna do that? I don't have any thoughts that are good enough to write about for that long. Um, and then sort of finding your niche and developing it throughout. Um, and then I found myself for, the first time writing a, a research paper that I was interested in, that I was searching sources, reading the whole thing, doing this, this, and something that I was really proud of. And I just the other day was talking to somebody about, they mentioned something. I My capstone was about fat feminism and public health. And someone brought something up in that realm. And I immediately was, I wrote this whole thing. And it, it's just such an easy thing to talk about. And you're really able to find your niche. Those are all excellent um, memories and, and such great things to share about your time in the program. I love hearing all of this. I guess, you know, one additional thing to reflect on, what do you wish you knew about the program before you started, right? So if there are people watching this that are thinking about joining the program or are going to be joining what what should they know before they start? I think again, it's just that um, I came into bioethics knowing nothing basically about bioethics. And there is really something for everyone. There is, you will find something that I guarantee there will be at least probably more than one thing that you're excited about. You're excited to come to class and talk about. I found myself coming to class most days, excited to talk about whatever we were talking about that day and was definitely one of those people that had to consciously keep my hand down on the other people talk because I just felt like I had a lot to say all the time. Yeah, to, to bounce off of that, um, in terms of there being something for everyone, I, would, I, I found my stride with this when I got it further into the program. But I would tell myself this to really anyone going into the program that 
like be your authentic self. Like there is something for everyone in this program. And if you sort of deep dive into a class or into a topic that, that is covered in foundations um, that you didn't know about or that you previously had some idea about, and you were like, wow, like I'm really interested in um, the ethics around adolescent care, for example. Like, why is it that, you know, there are these different things called assent or consent and what's that difference there? And there are so many of these interesting things that I like. Okay, like we have this capstone coming up. Like, despite even the smallest thing that you might even like imagine uh, someone like writing about or you might write about, there will be someone in the faculty who will be your, you know, facilitator and help you with that capstone and help you do the research and lead you along. I wrote my capstone on something that I didn't even think I would ever be able to write on. I wrote about the healthcare experiences of Southeast Asians, uh, Southeast Asian Americans in the United States and healthcare system. And that was something that I had no idea I could do an academic paper on or do research on or have someone a case even like, you know, help me on. And that was something that was monumental in me figuring out why I wanted to go to medicine, like why I want to go to med school, why I want to be a doctor. So if you, again, this idea of discernment, right? Like if you want to discern, you got to be your authentic self. And when you do that at this program, like that's where the most exciting things happen. Um, and you find the greatest mentors for that. Uh, and you just, I don't know, I'm excited now talking about it because I remember how excited I was like doing my research, which is like, again, if my undergrad self was thinking about how excited I am about research, it would be mind boggling, but that's what this program does. I would say um, something that I wish I knew or something that was said to me coming into the program um, that helped me navigate the program was Dr. Julia Nope said this to me. She said, just be open, be open to um, like different endpoints, be open to the fact that at the end of this program, you may not have the same interest. You may not want to go into the career you thought you wanted to go into and that's okay. But as you're going through, just allow yourself to go down different paths, explore different things and see where it takes you. And I think that that helped me so much in just even having an attitude of willingness to meet new faculty members that I didn't think were aligned with my interests, who turned out to be aligned with my interest um, topics, things like that. So I think that's something I'm glad I knew. <laughs> so that's a great segue into my next question. How did this program affect or change your career path? <laughs> uh, this program, and I mentioned this earlier a little bit, but this program like impacted my career path so much. I honestly, I honestly truly believe that I would have not been able to navigate the application process for medical school, write my essays, sit in front of a computer and talk to people online uh, for interviews. Um, I wanted to do it in person, but it was online this year. Um, I, I honestly believe that I would not have been able to be my best self as I was in those situations were it not for this program. And it is not because like I was necessarily sitting in front of the computer during the interview saying like, yeah, I did this in class and I read these sort of things, but it was like the sort of like critical thinking, the writing skills, the communication skills, these like soft skills that are honestly a lot of the times very difficult to learn in undergrad um, that I was able to really foster and then bring to these experiences. The second thing is that discernment, like that why, that question that you will inevitably get, why do you wanna to go to medical school? For me, when I first got into the program, I could not have answered that in any coherent manner whatsoever. Once I left, like, I was able to like, talk you know boundlessly about why I wanted to be a doctor so for me that's just my own experience other people may have like you were saying gesture and they'll go in thinking one thing and they'll go out being completely passionate about something else but for me that just happened to be medicine so I think that was in part because of the topics we were talking about because of my research because of the people I was around um, but it, it it didn't change my path as much as it like in terms of like different direction, but it very, very much so impacted in a very positive way. And um, yeah, I'm really here today in large part because of this program. Yeah, I 
started um, the program sort of thinking, well, maybe I'll apply like next cycle to med school still. Uh, law school wasn't even on my radar. Um, and it wasn't until I met all the different kinds of people, their PhDs, MDs, JDs, people with masters in every single thing you can think of. Um, and looking, being in the hospital environment and seeing how things work on the side that isn't medical um, and meeting people that had JDs that weren't just, I stand in a courtroom all day and do this, this, and this. Like uh, being a lawyer is a, a lot more, there's so many things you can do. And it was near, I would say middle end of the program where when people would ask, what do you guys wanna do after this? I was like, I think I'm gonna go to law school. And it was through the um, sort of conflicts that you see between law, healthcare, that um, overlap that made me really sure that that's what I wanted to do. And that's what fueled all my essays, all my applications, where I applied to based on their health law programs. And I ended up getting um, a law medicine fellowship from Case, Case's Law School, which I would definitely not have gotten through, uh, were it not for the bioethics program. I think for me, it didn't necessarily change. It solidified my interest in medicine for sure. However, it added <laughs> so many different branches. It illuminated interests that I didn't even know I had. I'm now considering and very likely to pursue an MD PhD. Um, my PhD being in anthropology, that was never on my radar. I couldn't have imagined undergraduate gesturing would never, I used to, I just wondered why do people do that? MDP, what, what, what for? Um, and now I couldn't just imagine going to medical school. Even if I did that, I know that at some point I would want to pursue some other um, degree in humanity. So I think it just allowed me to explore different things that, different realities that could be possible. Um, and, I don't know, I'm I, like Michael, I feel very <laughs> enthusiastic, but also just grateful. I don't think that I'd be here. I think that going into my new job, I'm taking in skills, those soft skills um, from the program. I'm taking in this openness and willingness. And it comes a lot from the component of intersectionality and that integrative aspect of bioethics. So I think it's more so a mindset behind a lot of what we're learning too that impacts you and changes kind of how you approach the world. So maybe more career changes to come, who knows? But yeah, that's currently where I am. I think that's great. You know, each one of you kind of used the skills from this program to go in different directions, right? So, you know, Jeshurun, right now you're, you're going to be in the research space. And Michael, you're going to med school and Peyton, you're in law school. And I love that each one of you are in these different areas and yet you're still all going to be connected to healthcare in some capacity in the future. And that's amazing. And it shows how interprofessional, interdisciplinary bioethics and medical humanities is. And as you guys have said numerous times, you see that in our faculty and staff in their expertise, in the world that they, um, in the disciplines they come from, in the spaces that they're currently working in, in the areas and expertise that they have. Um, but we also see it in our students, in the undergrad majors they have, um, but also where our alum go. So it's always so exciting to kind of hear that um, you know, both in our recent alumni like you are, but in alumni that are, because we're going to be starting our 27th year of the program this fall. And so even our alumni that are much further along in their careers, they're still, you know, in all different places. Um, so, you know, the last thing I kind of want us to continue to talk a little bit about, is there a particular part of this program that really, and we've talked a little bit about this, but I'd like us to dive more into this. Is there a particular part of this program that prepared you for where you currently are, right? So, you know, 
you know, whether it's law school, going to med school or going into research, is there something in this program that really was like the aha moment or was it a slow build up? I'm curious to kind of hear a little bit more. Yeah, I think something that has really, I, we've touched on it already, um, through taking medicine society and culture and reading and at, those sources can seem a little intimidating at first and you read them and think, well, do I really have a good opinion about this? And being forced to sit there and think about it and to share what you think and just building the confidence that you can read something that's complex and build an opinion, an educated opinion about it and feel confident to share it, even if it's not as well sussed out as the person sitting next to you. I think that's really helped me um, in law school, just knowing that I read this thing, maybe I don't understand it that well, but probably nobody else understood it that well. And I'm still capable of getting a good point out of this and being able to share it and have other people um, benefit from that. I think that's a really, really important point. Um, you know, that those around you may have the same kind of insecurities or, you know, concern that they may not get it either, but it's important to share anyways and to, to jump in with both feet and see what happens. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. Yeah, Peyton, that's one thing that when we finished Medicine Society Culture, my class talked about a lot. Um, because a lot of us had STEM backgrounds. So I was a bio major in undergrad. And for most of my classes, aside from the few humanities courses that I took, we were given a textbook or you know a document, told to read it, and then just essentially understand the findings that that individual or that um, uh, team had come up with. And there was never really a, a, any portion of what we did that was like, okay, let's like tear this entire thing apart not in a bad way, but let's sort of deconstruct what they did and see what can be improved or see if we can further any of their points. I remember when we started to first read Foucault in Medicine, Society and Culture, it was so intimidating because I had no idea what was going on half the time, but like Dr. Sadowski, Dr. Anderson were just like, yeah, just like totally tear this guy apart. And this guy is like this hugely influential, famous philosopher from way back when in France, right? And we're all just sitting here like, who are we to sort of like deconstruct this man's arguments? But by the end of it, we were all confidently like, yeah, actually maybe he shouldn't have said that and he should have said something else. And that sort of thought process, even though it seems like simple when you say it, making an opinion and then defending it, it's actually very difficult to do that in an academic way. And make it convincing, but also make sure that you are covering your bases and doing it in a very comprehensive manner. So that skill in itself was, was an incredible. And again, that skill was something that I brought with me when I was writing the essays and when I was getting asked those tough questions and the interviews, when a lot of the interviews were sort of giving us sort of cases or, you know, if, oh, oh, also a very obvious uh, application of this program, when you're in med school interviews, you might have um, these MMIs or these sort of short um, uh, interview uh, structures where they give you a set of like 10 videos or 10 or like a, a combination of videos and prompts. And each of the prompts are honestly just all these ethical questions of, you know, if you go into this room and something is happening or not all of them are medicine related, but they're all ethical questions. I felt overly prepared for these questions. I was sitting down just like, I could just be half asleep and still do well on this. And I did do well on it. And so that in itself is a very practical takeaway from the program is it helped in that particular sense. But, in, you know, broadly speaking, um, the application process all that, and also just like more importantly, figuring out why I wanted to go to med school uh, was all clarified a lot uh, through the program. As the course director for the clinical ethics rotations, that makes me very happy. <laughs> I remember just sitting down for these for these MMIs, and I'm like, I I felt like I was like at an unfair advantage because I I had seen these sort of questions literally every single week for a year. So <laughs> it, it felt as though I was preparing for this interview for the entire year. So 
Um, it was a good place to be. I, I wouldn't trade for anything else. That's great. That's good to hear for me for the future. <laughs> but um, for me, like the specific things that prepared me, I would say medicine, society, and culture, the essay structures was very helpful. Um, kind of talked about that a little bit before. But I'd also say the master's thesis was really helpful. Um, in general, the writing, I think, opened me up to research. Research looks different, um, the different topics, different structures, different methods. I think being in medicine, society, and cultural race in medicine, Dr. Sadowski, and having to construct a final paper, that's research in and of itself. Um, so here I am now entering <laughs> the research sphere, and I never um, anticipated that for myself. So I think just the general structure of writing and analyzing and day in, day out doing research opened me up to this new world. Um, I'd also say with the writing skills, it allowed me to find my own writing, my voice, I would say my writing voice. And it also made me cognizant of what I was portraying. So as I'm going into, you know, this research field and this project is, you know, to help people ideally, but, you know, there are things, there's always ways we can mess things up and misrepresent people. So I think that the writing that we did made me cognizant of how I was portraying other people, how I was presenting other voices. Um, so I think it offers not only, I know Michael's been talking a lot about discernment for yourself, but it also allows you to recognize that other people are having their own processes and how do you include them in that process? and Rep, if you have to represent them, how do you do it authentically and, you know, maintain their authenticity? So I'd say that's how those kind of are influencing you now. That's fantastic. Yeah. So I know that you guys are all either in school or in just in your case, early career. Um, can you imagine how you anticipate specifically using bioethics and or medical humanities kind of in your careers? I mean, this is kind of a hypothetical or it could be how you know it's going to kind of be. I know Peyton, you talked a little bit about, you know, talking to one of the faculty and she created her own path, right? Um, so, you know, this question is for all three of you. Um, but do you guys have an idea right now of where you imagine using bioethics and medical humanities in your career, in what you imagine your careers to be? Again, it's hypothetical right now. <laughs> yeah, I would love to, um, well, the first year law courses are kind of all set and so you just have to do what you have to do. But this coming year, I'm really excited to actually get to move into all the sort of health law courses. I actually did take a bioethics in the law elective um, this semester, which I also felt vastly overqualified. But I really loved it and I was really excited to take it. Um, and just sort of working in a in a capacity as a lawyer, whether that's representing um, like doctors or uh, patients that have had something happen, um, having that sort of deeper understanding of all the factors that go into healthcare uh, and the nuances of what can and can't be done and why people make the decisions the way they do, they do I think is gonna be really helpful. And it has really, bioethics has sparked my interest into all sorts of humanities and healthcare. Great. I think for me, with my current um, career, I think this bioethics program kind of helped me develop the mindset of advocate. So while I was working, you know, on the side of <laughs> kind of, you know, the institution, the big institution, medical institution, in the back of my, at the forefront, honestly, of my mind is still making sure that what's, what we're doing for the community of Cleveland actually benefits the community of Cleveland. And I think that that was something that was reiterated throughout the program, working with Dr. Goldenberg um, on his, you know, listening, he talked about his listening tours and things like that. Dr. Anderson, all our faculty were very um, 
adamant and particular about making sure that their work was actually making an impact and was sustainable. So that is really at the forefront of my mind going into this is how can I serve as that medium? Um, and if I can't be the best you know, representative of that, how, who can we bring in to help make sure that this is actually beneficial to the people it should be beneficial to, so. That's great. Uh, yeah, I think, and this is sort of similar to your point, Jeshen, um, I feel as though during my experience, I, I think this is still the case as well, there was a large emphasis on social justice in the program that I enjoyed a lot um, because it provided a specifically related to medicine, uh, 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 I guess, perspective into social justice that I hadn't found anywhere else. Um, and that's in the sort of work that the faculty do, just when you remind me of um, uh, Dr. Goldenberg listening tours, that was incredible to, 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 to learn about. Um, but also it comes from like the readings that we had and all of these sort of experiences really hammered down for me that humanistic side of medicine that I think I'll never be able to fully dive as deep into in medical school um, because medical school is about learning primarily how the human body works and dumping all your time into prioritizing that. Not to say that medical students don't have their bioethics courses and you know uh, medical ethics courses. That's at a lot of medical schools now as well, but you're certainly not getting your own degree uh, of bioethics or medical ethics or um, any term that you want to put on it while also getting an MD. That's just your primary focus is learning about medicine. And so looking into the far future, I guess not so far because I'll start working with patients within the next five years. Um, when I do start doing that, that's going to be at my forefront. My, my, my uh, research was about, you know, uh, the community that I'm from and the sort of health disparities and healthcare disparities that exist there and what can be done to sort of mitigate these and move the community forward away from those. Um, that doesn't mean that I'm totally focused on, on serving my community only, but it's one aspect of this humanistic approach to medicine that I'm very passionate about because of this program. And so whether it's uh, whenever I work with a you know, single patient that um, is in the hospital or at my clinic or whatever, um, giving them that individualized patient-centered, truly patient-centered care, or on a larger level, say I wanna go into policy one day, or I wanna you know, blend my MD into working in some other field and working in the larger community, that is gonna be a focus as well. How do I center my degree and my, tra my medical training to heal not only physiologically, but heal that full human being, whether it be mentally, whether it be you know, spiritually, all of these aspects that, again, I guess one of the terms that I have to mention here is interdisciplinary, because that was a term that is just so deeply rooted in this program to the point where I kind of got tired of hearing that word because <laughs> of how many times it was being said, but it's true. And that's, that's what bioethics is, it's interdisciplinary. And so um, whatever I'll be doing with these degrees, I know that at the center of it is a humanistic uh, focus in medicine. That's great. Th excuse me. <laughs> I think something else that is really important too, just in this, for me and going into this research career, um, is also recognizing that though I should and need to serve as an advocate for um, the patient, also recognizing that on the other side, the medical institution, the individuals, our future doctor, <laughs> uh, Michael, um, recognizing that they are not the enemy and that there's a system that we're all working within. So it's also serving as an advocate for them too and being one day my own advocate as a physician and just making sure that the time that I'm with that patient, like Michael was mentioning, is not only profitable to them, but also it's fulfilling to me and the purpose that I feel I must complete. So I think it's, once again, I have to go back to about this program kind of forming a mindset and not just, you know, being all in itself practical, though it is. <laughs> yeah, that's, 
it's a great perspective, Jeshurun, to have um, when you're working with all the different people involved in these research projects. Yeah, because there's there's a lot of different components to it. So, um, you know, one of the big highlights of our program um, is the clinical ethics rotations. Um, we hear a lot about um, students' interest in it. Um, and so um, I'd love to just have you guys talk a little bit about that because I know we get a lot of questions on it. Um, I will say, Michael, your experience was a little different because you were remote. And so rather than rotating in our hospitals, we had basically the experts come to you on Zoom and give talks. Um, and then also you were able to attend kind of national events um, as well. And because basically the whole world was remote, there were a lot of events <laughs> happening nationally. Um, but you're still welcome to answer this question. Um, um, but can we talk a little bit about clinical rotations and just or clinical ethics rotations and what that experience is like and kind of what you got out of it because it's such a big interest for folks joining our program. Yeah, I even still find myself on a very regular basis saying, when I rotated at, um, so I was at the Cleveland Clinic and then spring semester was supposed to be at Metro but only had a few before COVID happened. But um, just sort of being a fly on the wall to the entire healthcare institution at a place that has so many different people and disciplines that make it run that aren't just doctors and nurses. Um, I really had no idea how much went into a hospital system and making people get care that is well-rounded in what they want. Um, I think my most memorable uh, rotating experience was with one of the spiritual care providers at the Cleveland Clinic. And that's something I had never even considered uh, as someone who is really doing a lot of important work with not only the patients and the patient's family, but with the staff um, that are really going through it sometimes. And just seeing all the ways that a hospital functions and the hum the humanity really of every single um, player involved, I think was really eye-opening to me. I have to agree. I was fortunate to um, get to do my rotations at the VA both semesters, which I loved. Um, I think that, not to say the VA is perfect, there are a lot of ways that it can improve, but I think a huge obstacle in healthcare is financing different healthcare options. Um, and both for the provider in a research capacity and for patients in a therapeutic capacity. So the VA, there that wasn't too much of an obstacle for many people. So it was really refreshing to see, you know, the world of opportunities that were opened up to different individuals from all walks of life. Um, and I think it it kind of brought medicine back to this really nice, pure, like purposeful, um, you know, objective rather than, you know, the commercialized that we're so used to seeing in different systems. So I'm really grateful for that opportunity. I think seeing how the VA operates was another reinforcement for me wanting to go into medicine. I think the physicians there, Every, there's a, uh, it's genuinely a community of love. They really put the veterans first. They really appreciate the veterans and view their time in the hospital as a chance to give back to those veterans. And I think that was really inspiring for me. Aiden, I'm really glad that you mentioned um, that one of your favorite, one of your favorite experiences in ro rotations was with that spiritual provider. Um, because that's what I really took away from my rotations. Despite them all being remote, we were able to get this wide gamut of understanding with who works on a healthcare team. Uh, I think before I entered this program, I had a pretty narrow view of that. Like I knew that there were chaplains and I knew that there were you know, counselors and therapists and all these different aspects of who works at a hospital or providing 
you know, healthcare to a patient, but I never really knew how truly important every single individual on this team was and how it's important to have every single one on this team fully engaged and, you know, working together to provide that care. Um, because before that, my rotation experience had just been shadowing. So I would shadow a physician, maybe see the physician's team, or maybe see the MP, maybe see the you know, PA, a few nurses, but I never saw like the sort of specific work that say a burn unit nurse did. And that was one of my favorite, um, uh, it was a session that we had a Zoom with this uh, burn care unit uh, nurse, or I never saw like the specific work that a, um, a social worker would do uh, at the VA when it came to um, their resident patients, for example. And so understanding how broad a team can be, as well as how each individual co contributes to like each one patient's healthcare was mind boggling. And it was also really, really mind opening as well. Um, and obviously I, I'll, I'll learn more as I go through medical school and all of that, but it really set a great foundation for me to understand where my part would be, what my expertise would be and why I wanna do that. Um, but the rotations themselves, I am so happy that they're in person because I really wanted them to be, for them to be in person for us, but they were so rewarding online. So I can't even imagine what it's like to actually be physically following you know, people through the hospitals and the VA and, and doing that in person. Yeah, one of the, just talking about the, the big team of people is, this is one of the stories I wrote about in my admissions essays was just sitting in a room full of literally 30 people who all had different roles talking about one specific patient. And it was, they all had an opinion and a, asking questions to each other and it was really crazy. Yeah, those, those can, meetings can be intense and overwhelming, and yet somehow a decision has to be made by the end of the meeting, and it, somehow it gets done, because at the end of the day, the team has to come up with something <laughs> by the end of the meeting, so that's, that's great. Thank you guys for, for sharing that. Um, so we have about five minutes left, um, so I want to you know, leave it open for final thoughts um, for you guys to share um, for those who are um, attending. So, you know, final thought from you guys for those who are thinking about joining our program or thinking about applying that you want to just convey, um, whether it's about the program or case or just bioethics and medical humanities in general. I know that's a tall order. <laughs> I tell so many people about this program. Anybody that asks me what I did, they inevitably don't know what bioethics is. And then it launches into a whole, an explanation. I have had people at Cases Law School who are thinking about doing the dual degree program. Every time I'm do it, it's amazing. It's fantastic. Um, yeah, I definitely if you're even considering it, do it. And CASE is one of the greatest um, networks, resources. You have within like a five mile radius, so many different health systems. You have the Cleveland Clinic that has complicated cases. You have Metro, that's the public hospital. You have the VA, that's, it, it's really incredible. Yeah, bioethics is great. Um... That's that's it. No, I I think this program is is honestly such a privilege. It was such a privilege to be a part of this program, and I find I I find myself very lucky to be able to say that I was a part of it and that I was able to sort of find my next steps through it and to be you know with the people that I that I was with at the time, despite it being online. But we we did meet for graduation, which is a bit strange because we met for graduation and everyone sort of left, which is wild. But um, this program is such a privilege, it really is. Um, especially, uh, you know, after finishing this program, I've had the opportunity to experience um, other academic institutions and, 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 and how that operates. And the sort of community that exists at CASE is unparalleled. It is, un, it is honestly, for me, unparalleled. The, and this goes for undergrad, but it also goes for grad school as well. 
ask many case students and the first thing they'll say, which is, you know, what is your favorite part about going to Case Western? It's like the people you know. Um, it's your friends, it's your faculty, it's the staff. That support system is so strong and the advising you get, if you're open to it and you're authentic and you're willing to put yourself out there is honestly so, so, so good. Um, and that's been great for me professionally. And uh, you know, now I have this amazing, exciting next step that I'm looking forward to because of it. But it's also been great for me personally because I've had the people who have been supporting me, who still support me, who I can reach out to for you know, help beyond just career stuff. And that is priceless and it's a privilege. And so if you're thinking about it, go for it. You will not regret it. If you're you know, already doing it, then celebrate. You're doing the right thing. I 100,000% agree with both Peyton and Michael. Um, this program is amazing. It's awesome. It's everything. Um, I would say another cool tidbit that I heard in the program, you can also have those if you do it. Um, Dr. Anderson said this, and she says it often, but she says, pay attention um, to the things that you react to. And she says it specifically in reading, but I'll say that in general to being what you're exposed to. Um, pay attention to what causes you to get angry, to get happy. You can hold on to that thread and follow it to, you know, an interest, a passion, um, and eventually a career dream. So pay attention. This program is the best place to be exposed to a variety of things to react to. Um, <laughs> so take this opportunity, go into it with willingness and openness and just see where it takes you, but do it. <laughs> Well, thank you all so much for sharing about your experiences. I love hearing your excitement <laughs> about your time in the program and about where you currently are and where you will be in the future. We are so privileged to have you be our alums. So we love you and we are just so proud of you and where you are going and the amazing things that you will do in the future. And you guys are going to be changing the world. We know that. Um, so thank you so much for taking the time. And um, we just are so proud of you. So thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you so much. This was nice to step back in time and reconnect. This is great to re revisit my interest of telling everyone I can possibly tell about <laughs> bioethics. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you to our attendees and everyone have a good rest of your day.